Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn about the freeform tools in 3ds Max, uh, which are really an alternative to soft selection and I think these are more powerful because uh, we have some different options in here. Uh, this is a very new subject so I'm also discovering not that new. Uh, we had it like for maybe four or five years but uh, what I mean is this is a new uh, type of modeling for 3ds max because we are used to uh, modeling with edge extrusions or polygon modeling in 3ds max this this sculpting kind of approach is uh, kind of new or kind of um, it's not there for main uh, modeling purposes it's there for uh, helping to modeling purposes because the king of this type of modeling is zbrush uh, i i'm sure uh, most of you uh, have he heard about this uh, program software if you haven't, please go uh, on YouTube and type in ZBrush and you will see that it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, software. Uh, I uh, do use ZBrush as well, but I really like uh, that we have these uh, sculpting tools, um, not, uh, even if they are not as powerful as ZBrush in 3ds Max, because it helps me a lot while modeling. Uh, let me show you where they are. They are under Freeform in the ribbon in here. If you don't see this, you can just right click on your toolbar and you can just uh, open up ribbon I'm going to right click and click on ribbon and you can see that we have this um, new tab and uh, under freeform you will see the tools once you uh, select and edit poly so let's create the same uh, box we did uh, in the previous lesson uh, I'll create this with 80 by 80 by 20 and with the segments are 10 by 10 by 5 and then I'm going to move this to the origin. And now I'm going to add an edit poly on top. And you can see that we have a lot of uh, tools now under freeform. Uh, now the first thing I want to show you, the uh, one of the tools I use most, I guess, in here is shift. Uh, what it does is if you select it, you can just move these vertices around just as a sculpting tool, just as in ZBrush or Mudbox or whatever sculpting tool. Uh, you are familiar with. If you are not familiar with sculpting, the, this is what it does. It behaves kind of like real world sculpting, I guess. Uh, behaves this box as a clay, um, a soft clay thing, uh, volume, and then you can just pull and push wherever you want, and then you can create these wonderful organic shapes. Uh, I mean, a shape like this with Edit Poly is a little bit awkward to create, uh, right? And But with this tool, you can just go ahead and do uh, some wonderful stuff. Uh, let's look at some other tools like push pull. You can uh, let's hit F4 that you can you see this a little bit better. Uh, push pull is when you just press a point, it will push that uh, up. If you hold Alt and press, then it will push that in. So it's push pull. You can uh, do both push and pull options with this tool, and you can see that. Of course, you need to be uh, careful using this because it it could create these uh, weird shapes as well uh, but once you get a little bit um, more familiar with the tool you can see uh, that it's not that difficult to control uh, it just needs a little bit of uh, experimenting and uh, there is a wonderful tool in here uh, called relax soften uh, which will help you if you do um, mistakes as well if you use this tool it will just get rid uh, gets rid of that sharp corners and softens the model as you can see yeah. uh, which works very great uh, as well if you want to soften uh, the objects uh, try to remember the cushion model uh, and try to think what we can add uh, to that model with these tools flatten will help you flatten surfaces uh, it will uh, if you increase the size by the way once you play with these uh, brush uh, options you will see a paint options uh, tab like this popped up a panel let's say and you can increase the size of the brush let's increase this to 40 for example and then flatten tool will work better with big brushes because it will flatten the uh, whole thing okay even for, let's increase this even further like 100 and you can see that it will flatten this even better okay Let's decrease this to 40. And pinch will uh, pull the vertices together like this. You can just 
as you can see it gathers up the uh, vertices or again you can use this with alt and it will expand uh, the vertices like this let's undo some stuff here okay smudge will uh, as you can see looks like shift uh, but it's not that powerful like shift it's just it's like the smudge tool in Photoshop, I guess. Yeah, uh, I really like to think of this uh, as that. Noise will uh, add noise to the surface, as you can see. Exaggerate will uh, bring uh, peaks even uh, up more. And you can just play with those tools and see what they do. And also there are a lot of different things I use in here as well. Uh, I, I can't, of course, show all of them to you, but uh, for example, branches will help you create these type of branches as you can see it uh, works from that edit poly it creates this from this, this edit poly and you can just right away create very interesting shapes uh, which again is uh, a little bit tedious to do with edit poly itself right uh, if you were using edit poly these shapes would be a little bit awkward oh sorry <laughs> it didn't leave the two yeah and strips will also again do these type of st strips to the edit poly and one more cool thing you can do in here is let me undo this and i'm going to show you a very cool thing uh with uh, if you are using strips for example it's as you can see it creates the uh shape in the grid but you can change this to work on the surface draw on surface and you can pick this as a surface and then when you create strips it will create these strips on the surface as you can see which is very very cool because you can instantly create very beautiful topology and it will sit on this uh, shape if i get rid of this you can see that we could extract these type of little uh, faces from that uh, let's say you are trying to model a confetti for example and this is a uh, very cool um, right away we have this type of things and uh, i use this one a lot splines because um, let me show you why i use them <laughs> i want I just, I wouldn't even include this uh, to the basic uh, Photoshop tutorials because this is not really a basic tool in 3ds Max. But I, I man, I can just stop using these tools. I really love. Uh, I guess I really love uh, sculpting uh, <laughs> versus polygon modeling. So uh, I really think this is very cool. Let's say you have a terrain, okay, and I want to add some noise to uh, make this look more like a terrain. And uh, let's say we have a camera in here. Uh, I haven't shown you how to place a camera, but you can, if you are using Corona or V-Ray, you can just hit uh, one button and just read the names of the buttons and you, you will see uh, what they mean. Don't <laughs> worry that much. Uh, if you just hit create Corona cam from active perspective view, you, you can instantly create this cam. And let's say this is a landscape and we have placed our camera in here. And we want to add a road in here, for example. And you can just uh, select the noise plane, add an edit poly on top. And then just choose splines. Sorry, first let's uh, choose this as the surface and then splines. Then I'm going to hit T to go to the top view. And then I'm going to just draw a road. For, starting from the camera, I'm just going to draw this. And you can right away see that we have this line, which is very cool. And then what you can do, uh, do I want to show this to you? I, 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 get ready guys, I'm going to show you uh, some rendering. Oh, I'm so excited. We have a full rendering course in Udemy, by the way. Uh, you can uh, check that out. Just search for uh, CG Cave on Udemy and you will see uh, what it is. But uh, if you can't follow, it doesn't matter right now, but I just want to show you uh, how I use this spline to create a row. This is very, very cool. Um, I'm, I have created a Corona Sun uh, using Create Lights Corona Corona Sun. And then I'm going to just hit uh, the, the render button and it will be a little bit too bright. Let's uh, get in here. If I select the sun and then click on Add Corona Sky Environment, uh, you'll see that it's a little bit bright. So I'm going to bring down the exposure. It's under Post. I know I'm going to get a little bit fast, but this the the rendering was not on my mind. I just I just it, this is a whole uh, this is all improvising. Yeah, this is all improvising. 
let's uh, disable the uh, spline uh, enabler render option. I'm going to hit M and uh, this will open up the material editor. Just don't follow me, just watch this lesson, <laughs> I guess. I'm going to right click materials, corona, uh, corona layered material, which will create a layered material for the terrain. And I'm going to create two uh, separate materials for this. For the base material, I'm going to as apply a corona, a basic corona material. I'm going to hold shift and create a copy and add this to layer one. Now I'm not going to create realistic materials, but I want to show you uh, that I can just cre create two separate materials and use the spline to separate them. Now, uh, our base material is dark gray. Our, the road material, let's say, is light gray. And you only see light gray now. And I'm going to show you how to blend these two uh, using this spline. Now in Corona, there is a uh, cool, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to add a mask, double clicking on this mask one option. In Corona, we have a very cool map, which is called Corona distance map. And this distance map works like this. If you add the spline, for example, here, then you will see that, okay, you will see that, it. I guess it's some kind of a bug, but whatever. You will see that um, it will use this material, this dark gray material for the road and the light gray material for the terrain. You can just uh, swap these two to change that. And then I can just play with these values. For example, the uh, near distance to, I will increase this to 120 and I'm going to increase the far distance to 150. And you can see that uh, maybe this is too much. Let's uh, stick with 80 and 150. And you can see that we instantly have uh, a different texture for the spline and a different texture for the terrain itself. You can even add, um, noise maps to this. Uh, let's add a noise map to the distance scale, for example. Uh, I'm going to add a noise here. And you can see that we have this uh, noisy uh, sides, edges. I can decrease the size of this a little bit, change this to be fractal, and so on. You can see that instantly we have two separate uh, planes and uh, the th the very cool thing in here is uh, we didn't even detach this uh, middle road from the uh, terrain and it will help us add these type of noises on the edges uh, which is which is very very cool so I'm <laughs> I guess I'm a little bit too uh, excited about this stuff uh, I wouldn't even show this to you guys but uh, as I told you this freeform to tools they are amazing. Okay, I hope you had fun and you have you had learned something. I'm sorry uh, I have um, overextended what I was going to uh, tell you, but I, as you can see, I'm very excited about these type of things. Uh, whatever. I hope this was useful and fun. If you find it useful and fun, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button, and uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.